I hope you're having a great day and I hope you had a great weekend and you're staying safe at home. Today I want to talk about a very, very important vitamin. Like I always say, if you have a deficiency of a vitamin, you can have innumerable health problems in the human body. Now we can go on searching for complicated ways to solve all of our problems and all of our diseases. But if we don't look at vitamins, if we don't look at deficiency of vitamins in our body, sometimes that could be the only thing that needs to be changed. You know, like we have so many patients who come and they have knee pain and they've been advised surgeries and all of that stuff. Look at their vitamin D levels, get their blood tests done. They're at levels of 4 and 5 where they should be above 30, 40, 50 and 60. Fix the vitamin D, the pains disappear. The simplicity and the power of vitamins. Today I'm talking about vitamin K. Vitamin K is something that we don't usually talk about or we don't even mention about it in you know, our daily conversations about health, but it plays a huge role from your heart health to cancers to bone formation, osteoporosis, everything to do with your health. So vitamin K, all of us would hear of this as something for blood clotting. Yes, it's needed for, it's needed for our blood clotting, but a lot more. Bone formation, this is very important to me, not just because of osteoporosis. Bone formation plays a vital part of our immune, of our immune system. You know, our bones, our bones produce a lot of our immune factors. And if we have a problem with our bones, not just brittle bones, which lead to osteoporosis, I'm talking about the insides of your bone matrix, you can have a huge issue with your immune system. And a lot of cancers, a lot of cancers are also born from insufficient bone health. A lot of blood cancers and all of that stuff. So vitamin K plays a huge role with bone formation at the same time. Now, vitamin K is broken down into two components, two compounds, vitamin K1 and K2. We can derive K1 from plants and from food sources, which we'll discuss at the end of the video. But K2 comes from your intestinal gut flora, which is nothing but your gut. So if you don't have the right amount of gut health, if you have improper gut health, too much of bloating, acidity, constipation, you don't allow your body to produce the right amount of K2 which means your overall vitamin K is hampered and it could lead to so many different problems. So like I always say, when you look at the human body, it's a whole. You don't just take out diabetes and you just look at blood sugar levels. You don't just take out the heart and look for blockages. You don't just take out the kidney and look for kidney problems. No, you look at the entirety of the entire body because everything is interdependent on each other. The entire body is a whole. So what causes vitamin K deficiencies in the human body? Okay, usually deficiencies are very, very, very minimal. But this is what can cause the deficiencies. And if you have these problems, you may want to speak to your doctors about supplementing you on vitamin K or you've got to eat the right foods and correct your diet so you can get natural vitamin K from your diet. Number one is liver disease or liver problems. If you have an alcoholic fatty liver, if you have a non-alcoholic fatty liver at the same time, you binge drink on alcohol, you have liver cirrhosis, <clears throat> you have a liver cancer, or you have any problem where the liver's taking a role beating and your enzymes your SGOT and your SGBT are extremely high all the time, there's a possibility you have a deficiency in vitamin K. Then the second thing is fat malabsorption. So people out there on fat diets that don't eat fat at all, they do this oil-free cooking and they don't have any fats in their diet because they think fat makes them fat. You need fat for the absorption of vitamin K. You need fat for the absorption of vitamin A, D, E and K. So you can be popping all the supplements in the world or eating healthy food, but if you don't have fat, to absorb it, you have a big problem over there. Then you need the right gut health, like I said. So if you're constantly bloated, you know, you have too much of flatulence, acidity, constipation, diarrhea, IBS, you gotta look at repairing your gut, your microbiome, your intestinal flora, because the good bacteria is required to produce a host of vitamins. When you even look at vitamin B12, everyone's constantly asking about which supplement should I take, which are the foods rich in B12? Well, it's a little bit of that. More important is your gut health because B12 gets synthesized within the intestinal flora of your body. So you can keep popping stuff and eating food, but if you don't have the right gut health, you're not going to have the right amount of vitamins in your system. And then, of course, we have the, you have a poor diet. If you're doing all these fad diets or you have a really poor diet, too much of junk, too much of process, you don't have enough of grief, green leafy vegetables in your diet, you have a deficiency of vitamin K and that causes a lot of problems. Now, when it comes to your heart health, to prevent the hardening of your arteries, you need vitamin K. You need the right amount of vitamin K in your system. Osteos osteoporosis, we just spoke about that. Think of vitamin K as a biological glue that puts calcium and minerals into your bone matrix. 
So everyone looks at only calcium and only vitamin D, D3 for osteoporosis, but we have a big problem. Like I always give the example of the US and India, highest consumers of calcium supplements, highest consumers of D3 supplements, highest consumers of dairy products, but yet India and the US lead the world when it comes to osteoporosis because it's way beyond just dairy and calcium supplements. You've got to look at how acidic you are. You've got to look at your vitamin K. You've got to look at so many other things. Vitamins and food work as synergies. You can't separate them. We look at nutraceuticals and we just go and buy a vitamin K. Not understanding it's useless if you don't have the right gut flora. So when it comes to heart health and the hardening of arteries, you need vitamin K. When it comes to osteoporosis, your bone formation, your bone health, vitamin K again. The International Journal of Oncology talks about the relevance and the importance of vitamin K when it comes to cancers. They are showing us studies of how even in aggressive lung cancers, deficiency of vitamin K can expedite the growth of cancer cells. Not just lung cancers, colon cancer, mouth cancer, and even leukemias and blood cancers. You see the correlation? Blood cancers, bones, vitamin K. That's a clear picture for you to show you that medicine has to be integrative. It can no longer just be medicine. It should be medicine, nutrition, absorption, exercise, blood circulation, sleep, emotional wellness, everything together. Otherwise, we don't heal. We just get treated. We don't recover. We just get treated. Coming to diabetes, vitamin K2 is responsible for insulin sensitivity. Most people today have diabetes because of insulin insensitivity. Insulin sensitivity, you require vitamin K2. Where did I say vitamin K2 gets produced, synthesized in your gut? Today we know that if you have an improper gut, your gut bacteria is required for your insulin sensitivity. So you see the connection between your gut and diabetes as well. Everything is interconnected. Now what are some of the foods that give us vitamin K1, which is an important compound in your entire vitamin K structure? You have kale, cooked. You have broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, all of your cruciferous, all of your cruciferous vegetables, lightly steamed, lightly cooked. Green spinach, a fantastic vegetable, rich in vitamin K. Green beans. When we look at non-vegetarian sources, you have beef, you have pork, you have chicken, you have eggs. Then we have all fruits. Mostly all fruits have a little bit of vitamin K, especially the berry family, pomegranates, kiwis. You have your legumes as well, your rajma, your chanas, all of your lentils and all of your legumes. You have parsley, you have avocado, and you have cheese. If you're eating a balanced diet, you should be having most of these things anyway. Like I said, most people don't have deficiencies in these. But when you ruin your lifestyle, you have other problems and conditions. It's a huge issue. And that's why I encourage patients who are especially going through radiation, chemo, and heavy drugs. That depletes your gut bacteria, including antibiotics. So if you're not putting in the right vitamins back into your system, you have a big issue with other problems that are caused because of a deficiency of your main vitamins caused by your primary drug or your primary treatment. So whenever you're going through a medical treatment, take it. We're not against medical treatments, but you must change your diet. You must change your lifestyle so that the side effect of the first treatment doesn't cause more problems in your body through deficiencies. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.